Look at her with that hat. She's become the head of hopper of GabNet. Yes. <laughs> That's Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, 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 yes, uh, she is an ex-wife. That's why she has the name Bennett. Uh, and um, uh, uh, she's um, been going through some stuff. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how we how we describe stuff. It's much predicament. Yeah, uh, uh, she's dying, but then again, so are we all. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it is uh, it, it it's it's a situation that I have never been in in my life, being this close to somebody, going through this. Even my best friend who had cancer. Uh, because uh, we were more closely associated, shall we say, than just friends. Me, you mean. Huh? You and me, you mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we know each other quite a while. Yes. Uh, since, uh, let's see here, since I met you in that car in front of the Old Town Coffee House, in uh, what year was that? Do you remember? 59, probably. Yeah, 1959. I probably know you. I'm trying to think. Do I know you longer? I think I know you longer than anybody I I, I know. Well, it's 60 years ago that we met. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Is it that much? Well, look at it. Look at my hand. I mean, 59, 69, 79, 89, 99, 09, 19. That's 60 years. 60 years. Where did they all go? Yeah, that's always the question, isn't it? At this yeah, time of I mean, life. It just, <laughs> just gone. you know, just gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's amazing how, when you're younger, life looks at how long life is, and when you're older, how short it's been. You always think when you're younger. I did when I was young that you have forever. I mean, Sixty years sounded like forever when I was twenty. It doesn't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I when I say I'm 79 years old and I suddenly realize that how many people do I know or have I known can say that? You can know, say what? That I'm 79 years old. You know? People I don't live, Huh? I know a lot of people that are older than that. You know people who are older than that but not people who you grew up with or associates with you. I mean, I have people dying all the time. It's kind of like the common thing. I'll call my business manager, Gary, like I did today, and say, guess who died? You know? <laughs> That's what the old people do. <laughs> yeah, guess who died? And, and it's really uh, kind of... Uh, um, it's it, it's something that becomes a constant in your life. And as my mother used to say, she said, when you're a kid, your prime social uh, uh, thing is going to birthday parties, and when you're old, it's going to funerals. Funerals, yes. <laughs> it is. You know. Um, yeah, it changes. It's okay. Life changes. And by the way, it's all relative, let me say, because my mother had a friend who was 92 and she died. And my mother said, how can she die? She was so young. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Whenever we discuss the question of when is old on my blog, yeah. you get, depending on the ages of people, nobody is ever old. If they're 60, they say 70s are old. If they're 70, they say 80s are old. Yeah. And if they're 80s, they say 90s are old. Nobody is ever old. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, 79, which I am, to me is old. You know, and um, uh, it's it's uh, uh, by the way, I, while I wish you all a long life, maybe you don't want it to be that long, <laughs> you know, but you don't want it to be so long that eventually you're the only person left in the room. You know, and that's what happened to my mother. All her friends went and she was still going at 100. Yeah. You know. But who did she have? There was nobody came to visit her anymore. I was surprised that people came to her funeral because I didn't know if there were enough left to make up a funeral. Yeah, yeah that um, it gets smaller and smaller, the circle of old friends. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's, it's it, oddly enough, it's not something, at least in this society, 
that we celebrate. What? Age. We don't celebrate it. American culture dislikes old people. They would like us all to disappear. <laughs> well, we will. <laughs> so they'll get their I mean, way. They, they, all the politicians in Washington want to take away Social Security, um, which is the most successful social program in the history of the world. Um, they don't want us to work past about age 50. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's, I think, that 50, depending on the kind of career you choose, I think that's when you're really getting good, really good at your job at age 50. Um, and they don't want us to work past that. Um, they don't uh, want Medicare. They want to turn that into a private service that um, for, for the insurance companies and so on. They just don't like old people. Do you remember when older employees were considered continuity for the company? <clears throat> sure. You know, I learned from a lot of them wherever on the places I worked. Yeah, and that continuity doesn't exist in companies anymore. I mean, they're really... They all by themselves. They don't even talk to anybody else. Well, to begin with, they want nothing but young people to work for them because young people work for shit. You know, where an older person wants something for his expertise. Mm-hmm. You know. So, I mean, you're right. Old people are, are disdained and hated and reviled and considered uh, a blight on the... on the, on the. the. Uh... You know, I've often said to people that something happens as we're growing older. You never know when it's going to happen because we age at different rates, at each individual. But there comes a day when you don't know that you've done it until someone responds to you, that you have stepped across a line, that you have gone from ordinary midlife person that everybody respects and mm-hmm. all that, and you step across a line and you become an old person. And it happens to men, but more more than that, it happens to women. You become invisible. People don't see you anymore. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's, it's a certain look that you get, and the people who are adults who are younger then see those people always as old and therefore either demented or not very bright to begin with or forgot everything they ever knew and don't have anything useful to give to society anymore. That's how American culture treats old people. And thank God for the caregivers that I've discovered now. There are people who are different from you and me and most people we know who devote their whole lives to caring, even young people too, but I run into the ones who are taking care of old people, most mostly old people, mm-hmm. with cancer. And and they are dedicated. They are amazing people. And they aren't like the rest of us. They have a different a different kind of heart, a different kind of mindset. And they and I just respect and love them so much. But they are the minority. Yeah. Uh, I I just, you know, I mean, I found that as I've gotten older, the thing that I guess bothers me the most is I love the work that I did. Mm -hmm. And I love the radio and broadcasting and uh, doing programs. That's why I still do this thing, if nothing more, to keep my chops up. It's not for the tons of people who are listening, you know. Same way with my blog. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I would go out and look for work. But nobody will take me seriously, you know. Nobody will take me seriously. So I don't want to go through the indignity of going through the asking for a job process. Does that make sense? Oh, let me tell you the last time I looked for work before I said enough of this. I had spoken with someone at a web. I've been working on websites for 10 years, running websites. Mm. And I was spoke with someone on the phone who thought that I was really hot shit and wanted to see me right away. Could I be there at their offices at 10 o'clock the next morning to meet the person's boss that I had spoken to on the phone? Mm -hmm. So we made the arrangements, and I arrived at 10, and I waited and waited, and we got to be 10.15 and 10.20 and 10.25. The door to the inner offices opened into the reception room, and a couple of people stuck their heads in and looked at me and closed the door. And I waited a little bit longer, and then one of them came out, the person I had spoken to on the phone the afternoon before, and apologized and said he was terribly, terribly sorry that someone had forgotten to call me. But that job had been filled between the time that he and I had spoken, which was four in the afternoon the day before. Yeah. 
um, and my arriving there at 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever it was that day. And that's what I said, I can't do this anymore. It's all 27-year-olds who don't want their grandmother working for them. Wow. Wow. You know, I mean, I uh, um, the, the thing that I had the last time, the last time, was I did a replacement gig at uh, WOR here in New York. Because mm -hmm. they said, okay, Alex Bennett, we got a guy off on Saturday night or Friday night or whatever. Do your show. Do a show. Do his show. So I went and did it. And then I had a friend who knew these guys. I didn't hear a word from them after I did it. And um, They did send you a check, I hope. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, contraire. You think they send out checks now? Uh, I'll explain that one in a second, but uh, but that, that's not the point. The point was that finally I asked this friend of mine, would you call them and, and see what they thought? And uh, he called them and they said, oh, he was terrific. He's a real pro. And somehow that didn't sound right to me, you know, uh, a real pro. Yeah, that means I'm old, <laughs> right? And uh, I do a great job. But, you know, there's no job here. Mm -hmm. and, and I just didn't want to go through that indignity again. I also worked for them a second time. And uh, that was uh, New Year's a couple of years ago. And uh, to this day, I've never gotten a check. Did you call or did you email and ask? Uh, you know something? It, was so, it would have been so little because of what they pay in ra radio stations today that... I didn't bother. I just felt it was up to them to call me and say, where do we send the check? You know, well, not... You have decided before they hired you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always thought that you and all radio people were safe as you got older, as long as your voice didn't become right. kind of, you know, that scratchy old thing, because, um, because nobody sees you. So they don't like what old people look like. Who knows on radio? So I thought you guys were safe to work for as long as you were capable. Mm -mm. No, no, I, oh, I, I beg to differ with you. Okay, no, uh, I'm just saying, well, obviously, <laughs> I'm not, that's not true. No, but it's know? gotten to the point where I go, you know, maybe I should get up today and see what I can do. You know, it was funny. I was looking at, uh, I, you know, for some reason, I don't know how I got on. What's that site where people go for jobs now? Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, See, that's why I'm too old yeah, that's now. That's why they don't hire you, darling. You know, the, you know the site where everybody posts their they their their resumes and uh, there are jobs being know, offered there. The well, anyway, I got a thing from them the other day: jobs you may be suited for. So I looked at it. And one of them was um, head of podcasts at like I don't know Stitcher or someplace like that. And I was mentioning to my audience, I should apply for that. And when they try to dismiss me, I'll say, I invented the fucking podcast, <laughs> which I did. I have proof of it. Uh, I have the program that was written that, in fact, let people download the program every day automatically. It was called Auto Alex. I didn't write it. Another guy wrote it. But the concept was what is now podcasts. And, and I would love to be able to just go in there and have them dismiss me and then have me look at them and go, you know, I invented the podcast. But they won't hear you. There's no you know, point. There's really no point. You can't do that um, because it, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it just makes you, in their eyes, look foolish, old and foolish. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I, was, I there was this uh, new podcast, uh, ju uh, podcast industry journal. I don't know what it's called, and uh, they wrote an article about the first podcast and so on and so forth. So I wrote the guy and I said, "You're wrong." And he said, well, "You're not going to give up on this. You're going to do the whole show about this, right?" No, I'm not going to do the whole show about it. But I'm giving you an example of how you get dismissed. I mean, this guy went, oh, well, somebody did it in 1990. And I said, I was doing it four years earlier than you mentioned the first Let one. Let it go, Alex. Let it go. Why? You're becoming a, 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 you know, a get off my lawn kind of old man. All right. So get off my fucking lawn. <laughs> get off my podcast lawn. <laughs>
I'm so, I'm just sorry we never trademarked the or not trademarked but copyright the program because uh, we probably would be worth a fortune today, you know, as a result of it. But I'm not claiming anything except, hey, you know, I would like a little bit of, uh, I don't I do, you know. Alex, nobody cares. I know nobody cares. Nobody. So, so in other words, I've yet hit another stone wall of being old, right? No, it's, you know, that when I was working as the first managing editor at cbsnews.com. Yeah. Uh, nobody had ever done a news website before. CNN was building theirs at the same time we were at CBS. Right. And nobody knew how to present this stuff online. Nobody had ever done it before. We were inventing it. Mm -hmm. And I would steal things from CNN. They would check our site and they would steal things from us. And it was, you know, a consensus was slowly building of how to lay things out to make it easy to read and for people to use. And I invented some of those things. I don't even remember what they are. It doesn't matter. Well, I'll tell you something. I mean, if you do it every day. That You, you figure out a new way to lay out a, a, a video or a new way uh, to post photos. Um, it, 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 there are all kinds of tiny little things that help make it easier for people to use your website. Mm -hmm. And you work at them every day and you keep refining them. Mostly it's refining. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I just, I just get, guess I just want a little bit of, of um, oh, as somebody to say, hey, now this, this guy really came up with the first idea of this, you know, and I don't know. It's just me. I, when you get old, all you've got are memories for crying out loud. All you've got is who you are and what you did. And I'd like to think that I did a couple of things which were innovative and to this day last. But I'll tell you what I hate about the podcast. It's been co-opted by the corporations now. But everything is. Don't get upset about I that. Mean, the everything big, the, that is useful and that is capable of making money will be. It's the way the system works. You know, I mean, the biggest podcast in the country, I think, is something that has to do with NPR. You know, and, and uh, you know, uh, when I read about it, it's this company is combining with that company and they're doing a podcast and I'm turning on the TV and there's some person saying, I'm doing a podcast now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so to me, the but, podcast but, but, was but, the lowest form of show business. Alex, that huh? is what radio has become, our podcasts. Mm -hmm. And it's better service than radio was. Is it? Yes. Is it? Yes. Well, there's no vetting. You know, where with radio stations, you had to back up what you were saying. Oh, please. Oh, I did. I always had to. No, please. But nobody was checking ever unless you told a whopper. <laughs> um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and they didn't care. Um, it's, it's because you can, you can listen to podcasts anytime, anywhere you want. Mm. Radio, if you don't have it, you know, in something that's stuck in your ear or in your car... Or wherever you're going, you have to be there where the radio is, or you did in the old days. Now, you can subscribe to them. They download automatically onto mm -hmm. your computer. You mm -hmm. can put them on your whatever you're using to listen to them with. And it's just so much, there's so much more uh, availability. I mean, you can do it, you can listen in, in so many ways that you want. Yeah, well, uh, that's very nice, but you know. There was something about radio that made it different than that and uh, made it different in a very good way. It was perishable. When you did something, it happened at that moment and then it went into the air and that was it. And maybe there was something And nice isn't that irritating when you want to listen to it again? No, no but isn't that a kind of precious in its own way? It's like, you know, it's, it's something that, it's an art that is perishable. Whereas podcasts aren't an art that is perishable. Does that make sense? No, oh, not to me. Yeah, it does to me. I'm glad to have it there because, you know, people learn in two main ways. Mm -hmm. we're, we're divided in that way. Yeah. Some people learn best through their ears. That's the smaller group. Well, that's me. And a larger group learns through their eyes, through reading. Mm -hmm. and, and so listening to it, I'm always, I never have all the information I want that... 
you know, on, when I'm reading on a page, I can highlight mm -hmm. or I can scribble notes on the side or on a notebook or something. And when you only listen to it, I, listening takes so much time compared to reading. Reading is so much faster. And so if you want to listen to the podcast and get the sense of the conversation and what people are doing, it's perfectly fine. But I'm, in my case, who learn mainly from reading, I don't get everything the first time around. So I would have to listen again, which I don't have the patience for. Mm -hmm. uh, because it just takes so long to listen as opposed to read the same words. What podcast do you listen to? Uh, right now, I haven't for several weeks. I haven't. I just don't have the time. What What did you? I don't remember, Alex. Whatever okay. turned up, what I downloaded. Oh, okay. I all right. Remember. All right. Because some people do have regular podcasts. They yes, listen they to. do. Yeah. I don't, and that's okay. By the way, there's a lot of things everybody else does online that I don't do. One of them is read Twitter. I've never ever read Twitter. Um, I do my best to stay away from Facebook, although I distribute the blog on there. So I have to check it once in a while, but I don't do anything about Facebook. Um, I do not, I don't tweet. I don't, what do you call that instant message or something you do with it? You know, I, I can't remember what Instagram. it's Instagram? Texting, texting. Texting. I don't do that. No. I absolutely refuse. And I don't have to. I'm dying. What do I care? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my text. I'm dying. Uh <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I, I often thought about whether I can text you, and then I never realized that I, can't, I don't really have a text. Uh, you know, I can f put a text to your phone number, but it probably won't come up, will it? Sure it will, oh, and well. I, just, I just erase them. No, oh, okay. I, right. <laughs> I actually have gotten into texting lately once I realized that I could dictate my text rather than have to type them out. So... Um, I have enough time on screen, on my main screen, this one. Yeah, I don't need well, any other screens. I used to ask the question about texting, okay? You text to what? You text to a phone number. Right. All right? So yeah. if you're texting to a phone number, why don't you just push ring? <laughs> you know, call. Uh, but you well, don't. That's what old people like me mostly do. Yeah. I talk to, whether it's Skype or just on a telephone, that's how I talk to friends. Um, I don't see the point unless I'm on my way to your house and there's a, an automobile accident and maybe I'll text, hey, I'm going to be late. I'm stuck in traffic. Beyond that, I can't think of what I would ever text anybody. Well, um, I don't uh, have anything to say. That I, I pro brought this up to a younger person. and I said, why don't you just instead of texting, just call the number that you're texting to and talk to the actual person? And their answer was, sometimes you don't want to talk to people. You don't want to get into an engaged conversation. This way, you just make your point and you go. However, there's another problem with texting. And maybe this is me as an old person and I can't get used to it. But here is the big question, okay? Uh, <coughs> when do you end your text? So somebody says blah, 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 blah. And then you have to kind of let them know you got it and you go, thank you. And then do you write back, you're welcome. <laughs> You know, where does the text end? Listen, that's very interesting that you brought that up. I've realized that on the telephone lately in the past few months, none of us know how to say goodbye on the telephone anymore. When we're done talking, the conversation goes something like that. Okay, I'm going to go make breakfast now. Great talking to you, Ronnie. Really loved hearing your voice. Yeah, me too. We should do this again in a week. Um, I'm going to go now. Love you a lot. And the other person says, love you a lot. And nobody ever gets to goodbye. It goes on and on like that. And we've forgotten how to just say plain old, goodbye, talk to you later, and hang up. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I just don't see the point and, and that amount of time on screens and doing things on screens. Mm -hmm. um, I've got an awful lot of other things I need to get done in the time I've got, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it sure changes the way you do stuff, doesn't it? Well, it changes what's important. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, and by the way, every time texting has come up on my blog, which is, you know, my audience is almost entirely old people, um, the people who text a lot always defend it by saying that, that they wouldn't be able to contact their grandchildren without texting, that the kids wouldn't respond to anything else. Right. right. Really? Really? We teach kids to say please and thank you. We could, we could also teach them to answer the phone and say, hi, Grandma. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, look, I just looked at the clock. We've run out of time. What Already? Did, my, how time flies when you're... Having, and all we did was see, ditch, and, ditch, and, ditch. And you said before we started, <laughs> gee, you're going to have to carry this one, Alex. I don't know if I've got the strength. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, uh, well, and all we did was complain the and, whole time. And all we did was complain. <laughs> I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, okay? All right, take care, darling. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett.